for Rick Majerus is Ron Mercer, the All-American for Kentucky. Coach Majerus thinks he has a matchup problem there. Well, like all great scorers, he's terrific without the basketball. He understands how to read the bumps, the post screens. You can see these numbers. Outstanding outside shooter at 50%. He can elevate on jump shots, but he can lose people. The post people set them up. He runs them into them, and he can knock them down with the best. In the open floor, well, this would leave a lot of people looking for the pill. Great spin move. Utah huddled around Coach Rick Majerus in his eighth season as head coach of the Utes. He's the winningest coach in school history, trying to take them to the Final Four for the first time since 1966. His lineup has Keith Van Horn with Drew Hansen, Michael Doliak, Ben Caden, and Andre Miller. Van Horn needed 26 shots to score those 25 points against Stanford. Rick Patino trying to get the Wildcats to the Final Four for the third time in the 90s. He's in his eighth season as head coach at Kentucky. And his lineup has Mercer with Scott Padgett. Jamal McGlure will alternate at center with Jared Prickett. Wayne Turner has increased his scoring in the NCAA, and Anthony Epps is the two guard. <laughs> Third meeting of the tournament in the last five years. Kentucky has won both of the previous meetings in the second round in 93 and in the Sweet 16 in Minneapolis last year. Ted Valentine, Tom O'Neill, Art McDonald are the officials in Kentucky and White control the tip. And Utah, Sean McDonough, man a man. We're gonna have to tag Miller, a lot of bumps, a lot of activity. Gonna, they may post him up. Epps with a shot clock down to 10. Out for Mercer on a wing, guarded by Hanson. And Mercer scores 30 seconds into the game. And they go full court pressure on the ball, going for it early. He can elevate, can he, Sean? Gets up and gets great looks. Nearly a steal. Utah survives the press this time. You know, if that was Van Horn, you may have seen the shot. Caden, good fake. For the first Utah bucket of the game. And not much rotation. McGlure didn't take away the baseline, didn't get cooperation from behind. Caden had the best scoring game of his career in the matchup with Kentucky last year in Minneapolis. He had 22 points, one of the very few bright spots in that game for the Utes. Here's how they help out on Mercer. You can see the guard will help out on times. Turner. Worked hard on his jump shot over the summer. Rick Pitino said he went from a subpar jump shooter to above average, and he showed it there. That's a goal 10. Caton with four quick points. McGlure whistled for the violation. Well, Rick Majerus's word was judicious. We're going to attack and try and use good sense. A little push to blow by, and then the rejection. Epps guarded by Caton. Hansen has the task of guarding Mercer. We'll try four different bodies on Mercer today. And John, you notice Miller's sort of hedging down, looking to help out and scrape. They're going to give Turner the deep one. Not this guy. Mercer. They doubled Miller, who fed Doliak. And now Hansen. Utah doing a nice job using the big people to break the pressure. It's only a very intelligent approach thus far. Two teams perfect in shooting to this point. Sharp contrast to the start between Utah and Stanford, and that's a two-pointer for Van Horn. His toes were on the line, but he was just 9 of 26 against Stanford, so that's an encouraging start for Rick Majerus. The trajectory was what he wanted. He hasn't had lately, but a great screen down to free him, and not good switching by Kentucky. Six all the score. Two and a half minutes played. The winner joins Minnesota in the final four next weekend in Indianapolis. Good hands by Kate. Here's Miller ahead of the field. That's the kind of start you wanted for Utah. As you recall last year, shell shocked early. Good control of the tempo right now. In last year's game, Kentucky hit its first 13 shots. The work repeated as Epps missed. Eight to six, Utah. Three minutes play. And now they can settle, run their passing game. A lot of bumps. Van Horn gets good looks. Hanson. That's a 
three for Drew Hansen, the junior from Tooele, Utah. Well, does that open it up inside for Doliak and on occasion Van Horn? These teams sizzling out of the locker room. Utah yet to miss Kentucky three of four. Padgett, for McGlure, guarded by Doliak, and a whistle by Ted Valentine. He and Tom O'Neill confer. It looked like Valentine was going to call a travel, but Tom O'Neill said the bump by Doliak caused the walking, and therefore it's a foul on Doliak, his first. Well, this is the body up. you got to give a little bit of room. McGlure progressed nicely all year. They've got two solid centers. Maybe a little inexperience, and Doliak can control that time. Just didn't get the legs out of the way. Seven unanswered points scored by Utah. Now Art McDonald blows his whistle for a hold as Kentucky tried to inbound the ball. The foul's on Hanson, his first. Uh, you're going to have to bang him to do a lot of things. You can just see a couple of free shots. Uh, Mercer keeps moving. Very tough to defend. Quick feet. Rick Pitino's worried about fatigue on the part of Mercer. He played 39 minutes in the game against St. Joseph's, and he's doing it with a bad back. Miller fouled on the way to the bucket. On a reach in by Padgett. Oh, they're taking advantage. The big guy's trying to get back and defend against the little guy. Good read by Miller, almost like the open. They'll push big people. He'll hide behind them. He's got great acceleration and strength getting to the goal. Andre Miller injured his right hand, crashing into the basket support in the win over Stanford Thursday night. Looked like he hurt his wrist, but he said it was more the knuckles on that right hand that were bothering him. He had a variety of treatment over the last couple of days. It showed no signs of it affecting him during the warm-up. We watched him dribble and shoot, and he looked like just another guy out there. They said he's fine. A high threshold of pain is what Rick Majera says he possesses. Something that's escaped you, I might add. <laughs> And despite the 19 points, the assist to turnover ratio of 11 turnovers and one assist the other night against Stanford led Rick Majerus to call it Miller's worst game of his career. Utah the 9 nothing run. Miller off to a much better start tonight with three assists and no turnovers. Up on Mills, obviously, great start. Jordy McTavish in the game. Key how he plays with Miller getting the blow. Jared Prickett's in the game. He was shut off by Doliak. Padgett gave it back to Prickett. Shot clock at 11 as Padgett hosts a three. Rebound Hanson. And what a nice check out. They have been solid defensively. Here's the key right here, Sean. How McTavish plays now, subbing for Miller. McTavish is a freshman. It's an all-freshman bench for Utah. Coach says he has to have the only all-freshman bench in the country. Doliak. And Turner in traffic with a strong rebound for the Wildcats. Mercer might have gotten away with a travel. Nice switch there, Doliak, and the slip to the goal by Prickett. Rick Majerus thought Turner traveled as well. Doliak the rebound, 13 to 6 Utes, nearly five minutes play. And they got Van Horst, they want to use him. See if they double. They did double, and Mercer saw the pass coming to Doliak and picked it off. Great read. Mercer shot short, Padgett a tip in. They are so coordinated defensively. I mean, they read one another. The double that went down. Mercer steps into the passing lane. Payton playing with confidence. No luck on the shot as it went spinning out to Prickett. And Kentucky likes this upbeat tempo, though. And a little hand check called against Jordy McTavish. Timeout, 14-42 remaining in the first half. A much better start this year for the Utes. Well, Sean, you had mentioned the difficulty shooting the basketball for Keith Van Horn. 9 for 26, 2 for 10 for 3. Great screen from Doliak as he pops up against it. Now watch the trajectory, Sean, right here, all the way up. Yesterday, it was direct and not as efficient. So the coaches picked something up, got good elevation. The arc is there. They're going to be running some bumps for him. On the inbounding play, Kentucky ran a play for Padgett, and he scores in traffic. Four points for Padgett. He had 12 in the win over St. Joe's on Thursday night. 
Kellogg always talks about spurtability. That's something Kentucky does. They keep coming after you. The press is relentless. They like to get you speeding up, think quicker, act quicker, and make mistakes. Two more freshman subs into the game for the Utes. Jeff Johnson, number 35. Amo Medela wearing number 13. And Horn, and a strip by Turner, he knocked it out of bounds, and that's what Rick Pitino said yesterday about his matchup problem with Van Horn. If they try to guard him with big people, it's a problem outside. There were three people that attacked him on that particular play, Turner being the last. Nice little scrape at the end. Turner looks, uh, excuse me, Van Horn looks much more comfortable, even though Turner made the nice play. Able to dribble a little, make that open jumper earlier. Double screen for take him with the dribble if he so desires. Shot clock down to five. Johnson lost the handle. And it's out of bounds. But a foul call with one second on the shot clock. And Rick Pitino is living. Well, that's one of those deals. Great defense negated by a little small change under the rim. And this is just a, a broken kind of a play. A little reaction here and there. I don't know, Sean, huh? Nickel Dimer. That wasn't the foul we saw because that was Mills who reached in and they called it on Padgett. And he has two. The fresh 35 on the clock. Miller, double team. Got out of the double team but missed a shot from in close. Rebounded by Cricket. Three to tie for UK. That's a tough matchup. He's been dribbled into a post with a tough shot. Fade. And follow the rebound action. Johnson did a great job defending Mercer, but Metal is called for a hold as he was trying to fight off Jared Prickett. Here's what happened last year when they met in Minneapolis in the Sweet 16. Kentucky led by 22 at the half. Hit its first 13 shots from the floor and forced 21 Utah turnovers, and that's the concern again today for Utah Miller, the only really good ball handler that they have. And a little roll here by Mercer uh, after that. Tough loss. Pajera swore off solid food. It didn't work. <laughs> Foul on Cricket as he went to strip the ball away from Metala. First foul on Cricket. Uh, Sean, you've done Kentucky games. The different pressure points that they throw, the different looks. This time, they don't play the inbound passer. You've got to be ready at different points on the floor. I mentioned how the coaches think both teams are different than last year. Rick Pitino says Utah is a much better defensive team, and the numbers certainly bear that out. Payton, rebound by Nazim Muhammad, who's just in the game. Both coaches agree Kentucky isn't quite as good as it was a year ago. Cricket fouled as he went strong to the bucket. The Cats moved the ball quickly up the floor. Now, earlier, we talked about Utah running the floor. The big guys were Cricket and Padgett have an affinity to leak out, get themselves in position. And the Kentucky philosophy, complimenting great pressure defense with the push up the floor, realized. Two quick fouls on Mike Doliak. Just more than seven minutes into the game. The 6'11 center will take a seat. Van Horn's back in. Hansen has returned. And another freshman off the bench, David Jackson, wearing number three, is in the lineup. Cricket will shoot a pair. And Sean, they feel Jackson can dribble the ball a little bit, compliment, take a little stress off of Miller's game. One, eight, one shot. One shot, one shot. Cricket a 63% free throw shooter. In his fifth year at Kentucky, Shadow last year as a medical red shirt. He missed both free throws. The Utes still have a one-point lead. Good luck. Hanson collided with Muhammad. Tom O'Neill put his arm in the air to call a foul and committed the block. He brought it back down very quickly. That's why the Ute fans are booing. Mercer missed a three out of the corner. So after a hot start, Mercer is cooled off. Really posted up nicely, and he had Turner. Miller's got to read that. He still has it. Box to box, good read. Middle off the pass from Jackson. First bucket for Metala, the freshman from Helsinki, Finland, playing 7,000 miles away from home. And he's going to be a talent. You don't get out cricket. He, he, normally, Padgett's the guy that makes that run. Rebound got tipped out to Van Horn. Miller one on one with Turner. Good read here. That's the judicious use of the bounce. 
More than eight minutes gone by. Utah leads by three. Switching everything on the perimeter. That's why Turner's on Van Horn. He should take him into a post dribble situation. As he went to the box, he saw Muhammad slide over, ready to double. And the ball batted out of bounds by Prickett. Six seconds remaining on the shot clock. When we come back to San Jose, the Utes lead by three. 11.34 remaining in the first half. Back in San Jose, where Utah has a three-point lead, despite the fact Keith Van Horn's taken only one shot. He made it. Utes at 55% from the floor and only one turnover. Ron Mercer with six points on three of six shooting. And three ties in the game. The largest lead for the Utes was seven. The biggest lead for Kentucky, two points. Well, uh, we spent some time with Rick. Every restaurant becomes a Chinese restaurant with him. He orders everything in column A and everything in column B. But the one thing, he loves his kids at Christmas. Metal, as you see the tee up by Miller, spent Christmas with him because he was a little bit homesick and concerned about him. A lot of feeling in this program. Epps to Cricket. And now Turner inside to Mercer. Great ball movement as usual by Kentucky. And the Cats are back within a point. Mercer has eight. Over the top. Nice attack here. Now you got to back it off. One of the numbers. How about Mercer's ability to elevate and shoot over people? Jackson, nice pass again to Metal. Offensive foul as he steamrolled Anthony Epps. See, that's a flop to me. Uh, Metal. Gets caught, Epps with a wise little movement right here. Now you think he's going to pop out to the high side. He just gives a little fake and a juke and a post up and a disadvantage here by Hanson. Now there's the elevation. Under duress, still able to get up a few inches. Two fouls now on Metala. And he replaced Doliak is on the bench with two. Mercer catch and shoot. Hanson right in his face that time. Cricket got it out to Epps. They stuck in by McClure. Van Horn's got to be alert for it. Nearly midway through the first half, Utah with a one-point lead. Epps, the senior, off to Turner. Along with his jumper, rebounded by Miller. Perfect trap. Mercer let him right to Turner. Just read one another. Such great coordination defensively. Hanson, perfect straight A student at Utah is Drew Hanson. 3.98 GPA over four years, just one A minus as a political science and economic major. Now you can relate, certainly. <laughs> to the minus portion, right? <laughs> a nice steal again by F. They just defense takes away the penetration. The others turn, get into an area where they can do some damage. And it's not so much the full court press. You think you got that under control. Everybody steps up to cover the kickback. You think it's open. Hussein moved to the basketball. Dive to the hole. Epps with an extraordinary read. Two personals now in hands, and that puts Utah over the limit. Seven team fouls. Kentucky's been called for only three. Hanson's heading for law school when his time at Utah is done. He's a junior. Played every position for this team this year except center. Wants to be a sports agent. You think a guy that bright would have mm -hmm. higher aspirations than to <laughs> be a sports agent. You can always represent play-by-play -play people. <laughs> they really want to get down there. Uh, that's a pretty good receiver. You can see by that body he had a football impact. Of the, I mentioned the other night uh, Nolan Richardson loves his contribution to this program, dubbed him the silent assassin. He was an outstanding receiver in football in high school, led the state of Kentucky as a senior in receiving yardage, better than 1,100. Wanted to play basketball and came to Kentucky as a walk-on and earned a scholarship. Andre Miller with a behind the back. You don't do that against Kentucky. Very fortunate to come back up with it. Kentucky has reclaimed the lead after the run by Utah. And Mills on Van Horn, but watch the double quickly. Van Horn tries to post. Van Horn, a three, and he made it with a hand right in his face. And then getting the ball up. What a tip from the coaches. Van Horn, two out of two. Five points. Utes by two. Now they want to be aggressive, but not continue to foul. And a little problem already. Methel has got to be concerned. Gambling with him with the two. 
Cricket. Now Epps got Miller in the air. Epps thought he was bumped as he came down. Lost the ball to Drew Hansen. Ooh, he walked there too. Hansen quickly down low to Miller. He spent a lot of time down there trying to post up Ribbon Knight Thursday night. Medal out of control, threw it away. And what a nice looking move, but there again, Kentucky beat one. You got to counter others. A little uh, looseness here. I think Epps may have gotten hit. A little walk to Park City by Van Horn. <laughs> Four turnovers now by Utah. Cricket inbounds to Epps. They're on the court with Muhammad, Mills, and Mercer. And for Utah, it's Miller, Payton, Hanson, Medela, and Van Horn. They're not letting Mills get a good look. Nice hand hedge by Medela. Cricket back Medela in. Oh. Muhammad to put back. Well, Muhammad sees all, conquers all, huh? Nice little body rub and causing a turnover as Medela. A little inexperienced inbounding the pass, throws it directly out of bounds. And Rick Majerus has called a 20-second timeout. Well, they say Muhammad governs the land, the three-second area, his domain. Everybody trying to post position. And this is a great rebounding team when you think of it. Padgett, Frickin, Nazi Muhammad, and McCullough. Muhammad came to... Kentucky weighing over 300 pounds. Rick Pitino went to watch him play in high school and said he barely made it over midcourt. By the time he got up to midcourt, the ball was going in the other direction. But he liked his hands. He said there probably isn't another person in America who would have given Muhammad a scholarship. But Pitino knows with his program's history of getting players to get in shape and lose weight that if Muhammad could get in shape, he might be a terrific player. He's dropped about 70 pounds, and he's become a key performer. Maybe we can get Majerus to enroll at Kentucky. <laughs> Eight minutes left in the half. Cricket. Cricket went over the back of Van Horn after his missed shot. And Jarrett's called for the foul, his second. Rick Pitino made one observation yesterday about Rick Majerus. He said, I noticed every time he's interviewed, the subject of food comes up. <laughs> a charge Majerus would not deny. Back in a moment. Tie game, 18 all the score. We're pleased to be joined here in San Jose by Mike Mayock. Mike? Thanks, Sean. You know, right before tip-off, I asked Rick Majerus what he was going to tell his kids before the game. He said, you know, it's really interesting. A year ago, I conducted a Billy Graham revival meeting trying to convince the kids they could beat Kentucky. This year, uh-uh, we can beat them. The kids know it. It's business as usual. And you can see with the score 18-18, to 18, the kids have really bought into that philosophy, Sean. You have indeed. Obviously, much more confident, Mike, than your teammates and you must have been when you played on that 0-11 football team at Boston College. <laughs> That's payback from a little uh, shot he I, took at us on Thursday night, as we know. Well, they have patience, low-scoring game. Utah's favor now. Run their passing game. Mills down on Van Horn. Looks easy, but look at everybody sniffing down there to help. Opens up the jumper for Medela. And he missed the jumper from the top of the key. Tie game, under seven and a half remaining in the first half. Winner of this game goes to the final four. That's a long three. He was a big part of the annihilation of Utah by Kentucky last year. Epps came out hitting shots from the outside. Rick Majerus rolled the dice and played off, and it didn't work. Hayden thought he had an uncontested layup, and Cameron Mills hustled back to knock it away. And what did Rick Pitino say about his speed? It was questionable in high school. Maybe he could shoot it. He wasn't a Kentucky kind of player, but he's a Patino kind of player. Great effort in the open floor. Patino told Mills not to come to Kentucky. Said you'll never play. He can't give you a scholarship. Thought he was too slow. Encouraged him to go elsewhere. He's glad now that Cameron stayed in Lexington and played at UK. The miss by Miller, the rebound by Mohammed. Kentucky with the ball up three. Muhammad has four rebounds off the bench. A nice little string out here. They blitz the pick and roll. Good recovery by Van Horn. Hayton trying to guard Mercer now. And Mercer buries another from the elbow. Size-wise, can't handle him. Speed-wise, can't handle him with that matchup. This is the greatest deficit Utah has faced in the tournament to this point. First time they've been five points down. 
And another turnover. So the amazing thing here is the dexterity with the bounce. A little ecstasy on this release. He knows how high he has to elevate to get a good look. Mercer, the leading scorer in the SEC this year. First team All-American. Also the MVP of the SEC tournament. And perhaps playing in his final game at Kentucky. He's playing as if he doesn't want it to be. He just turned and stared at Caton as he scored over him. Sean, that's just a great play, a screen down. He's so active, but they bump for him. Gets his feet turned, able to knock down shots, but all coordinated with a great rub offensively. Imagine the dilemma of teeing it up against Mercer. I mean, here's the down screen. Look at the turn. Get squared. Great rotation. Attention to detail. Mills called for his first foul a moment ago. As Kentucky was applying the pressure, just five team fouls on the Wildcats, so not yet a bonus situation. Kentucky has scored 11 straight points. Oh, yeah. And the run missed the three. Now they laid off him, and as you know, he can make that shot. They're switching everything. It's confusing Utah. Oliak now 7 of 17 for the season from three. He can make it. Mills certainly can. 72% in the NCAA tournament from three. That was a two-point miss. Last touch by Epps. Utah will play it in with five and a half left in the half. And they made him put it on the floor. Very key against Mills. They're coming to double Miller. Mills and Mercer. Miller's in trouble. And he threw it right to Perkin. Epps for three. Rebound Van Horn. Might Utah be better served in instance like that, Bill, where it looked like Miller had a Take chance a to push it up and don't give Kentucky a chance to pressure in the backcourt. I think they really had their problems now. Quicker offense, making decisions quicker. That's a two-point try for Van Horn and a tough shot as he was backing up, and Muhammad ripped it down. I think you've got to do it when it shows, Sean, but I don't think you should get wild The 20 now by Epps. Tomorrow, CBS Sports Olympic Winterfest goes to Trondheim, Norway for the World Nordic Combined Ski Championships beginning at 12.30 Eastern. Then at 1.30, the top players and coaches of the 96-97 college hoop season will be honored at the Boost Naismith Awards, followed by the Road to the Final Four at 2 Eastern time, featuring previews of tomorrow's regional finals. That's the start of the day tomorrow here on CBS. And the matchups tomorrow at 2.40 from Syracuse, Louisville against North Carolina. Then in the southeast, Providence takes on Arizona with a great performance by the Wildcats as they ousted everybody's favorite, Kansas. Mm, great game, too, to watch. Uh, Ricky roaming the sidelines. And they complement the pressure D with good, quick-hitting offense. Motion, nobody stands. A threat when you catch the ball. Look at the little curl here, the dive by Prickett. Turner, Mills, Mercer, Prickett, and Mohammed. On the court for UK, Mercer as Peyton fell down. Mercer scoring from everywhere on the court. Oh, you're asking for mercy from Ron Mercer. The deflection by Doliak. Well, player of the year in high school. Went to Kentucky because he'd be comfortable playing behind Antoine Walker. Finding his way here using the bump and then the spread dribble to knock it down. Mercer goes out with 15 points. He had only one season in that supporting role. This year he was counted on to carry a huge part of the load, particularly after the knee injury to Derek Anderson in January. Sideline Anderson for the rest of the year. Mills called for a nickel dimer, as Bill would say, on the hand check in the backcourt, his second. Mercer very quickly back in. Kentucky leads by 10. And they don't get Van Horn enough touches, Sean. That's part of the dilemma. He can use the dribble now. Be more of a threat. He plays so much within the offense. He's unselfish. I think sometimes it hurts Utah. Caden up to the Doliak. Mohammed contested the shot. It's tipped up and in. I think it may be Doliak, Sean. Really followed himself got to pound it in and do some damage in there. They did credit the bucket to Doliak, his first points. He's a junior from Portland, Oregon. 
Mercer has single-handedly outscored the Utes. 9 to 2 over the last 220. The Kentucky lead is 8 points. Nearing 3 minutes left in the half. Muhammad had his shot contested by Van Horn. The shot clock did not reset. There was no iron drawn. Epps picked it out to Turner with the shot clock running out. And Turner makes a big shot. Well, the, we've all talked about that stroke and release. Uh, they give him the confidence he can hurt you at key times, generally in the three-second lane. Look at all the white shirts. you got to go over the top. They have a numbers advantage. Van Horn, and not a lot of arc on that shot. Drew Hansen came away with it for Utah. Van Horn went by Epps, and that's a held ball. And the arrow gives it to Utah. Nice job defensively here. He beats one. They've always got somebody else stepping up. Tough to beat the Cats on the Kentucky leads by 10. Utah's start in this game, the exact opposite of its start against Stanford on Thursday night when they came out cold and then picked it up. In this game, they hit their first five shots, but have gone three of 16 since, and Van Horn's only been able to take four shots. He's been doubled a lot of the half. I, I think they've reacted with the switches. Uh, even though a small guy ends up on him, uh, helping out when he's in the low post, here the advantage. Whoops. But he should let that go back. They just automatically switch now. Turn around him in the box. Look at Muhammad trying to help. Okay, you got to use him. Shot clock at three. Hanson had to throw up the prayer. Rebounded by Van Horn. And that wouldn't go. You probably been a little bit unlucky. A couple of shots rattling in and out. I'm really confused, I think, in running their offense with the automatic switches. Two minutes left in the half. Kentucky by 10. Nice. Cricket to Muhammad. And the Cats have their largest lead. Four points for Muhammad, the sophomore from Chicago. And a timeout called by Utah. I draw the defense, a little slip pass, the double. You don't get the hands down. And the counter at the other end, Sean, the inability to slip on switches is the problem with Utah's offense. They've got to dump it into the box, let them trap, and make sure they slip to the goal. Mercer, 7 of 11. The rest of the Kentucky team is 7 for 18 from the floor. Well, Van Horn has only attempted five shots. Good rebounding off the bench for the Cats as well. Five rebounds from Muhammad, five from Prickett. And they back off the, as they have now with the good half-court defense. They've been confusing. A little zone look now, 1-3-1. They got to know where Van Horn is. Starting five on the floor intact for Utah. Miller stripped by Turner's quick hands. Turner, the sophomore from Boston, Massachusetts, strong to the bucket. And Pickett there with the follow. Uh, Turner does a great job dragging people, and you don't get in position to put a body on a guy. And all of a sudden, this game is starting to resemble last year's game. With Kentucky winning its lead, Doliak stops the run, at least for the moment. Michael is four. Got to do a better job rebounding, obviously. Uh, don't let the guards turn the corner. And Mercer, huh, who's going to stop him? He's shooting for a high percentage. Rick Pitino said as a team, the Wildcats need to shoot for a high percentage because they can't press if they don't score. Shot clock under 10. Epps guarded by Hansen. Epps lost the handle as he went up. The Utes can take the final shot if they so choose. They have numbers in their favor. Beautiful. The lingerie. The linger in there. Nice ball fake. They need to stop here if they're going to get on the 10. The 10 point game. 10 seconds left in the half. Cats hoping for the final shot. They should deny everybody the ball now. 
Tough pass. It goes out of bounds. Six tenths of a second remaining. And a chance for a heave, perhaps, for Utah. Rick Pitino called his entire defense back. Miller from half court at the buzzer off the top of the shot clock. Kentucky has won nine straight NCAA tournament games. A win today would be ten in a row and a return trip to the Final Four. And the Cats lead Coach Majerus's club by ten at halftime. Ron Mercer, the key to the first half with 15 points. Now let's check in with Mike Mayock. Coach, first half, your All-American Ron Mercer certainly played like an All-American. Yeah, but he's playing an awful lot of minutes right now. There's a lot on the line, so exhaustion can't be part of the equation. Biggest concern, second half. Well, the main, main thing is Scott Padgett got a little ticky-tack second foul. He had a sit. He should be well-rested. Let, let's count that as a blessing. Coach, good luck in Thank the second you. half. Sean McDonough, take it away. At the end of the first half, the score is Kentucky 34 and Utah 24. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship will continue after this message. And by McDonald's. This was the lowest scoring first half of the season for Utah. They're down by 10 to Kentucky at halftime. We'll return to San Jose after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. The NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Genuine Chevrolet, Budweiser, MCI, and by Mobile. Kentucky by 10 at halftime. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery. Bill, we talked at the top of the telecast. Rick Majerus had a concern about how he would match up with Ron Mercer. Uh, unbelievable ability with the basketball without. He moves smartly, uses bumps. Right down here, the ability inside to post up and dominate and then elevate and linger a little bit. Well, off the dribble, Sean, you want to see a little bit? The pull up elevates over Hanson and using a curl to get himself free then avoid the traffic still Connery, he has been difficult and they're gonna have to run a couple at him 15 points for Mercer on 7 of 11 shooting in the first half it's Kentucky ball to begin the second half Turner Epps McGlure Mercer and Paget on the floor for UK and you heard Rick Pitino say at the beginning of halftime might be a blessing that Paget got those fouls he should be well rested for the second half Got to be solid for Utah. They must rebound a little bit better, Sean. Utah opens with Hanson, Caden, Miller, Goliak, and Van Horn, the same five that started the game. Shot clock at five. Turner's going to have to hoist one. And it wouldn't go as the shot clock ran out. Goliak running the floor, dished it off to Caden, and he was fouled by Mercer. What a nice look by Van Horn. The rebound, I'm sure Rick addressed checking out. Don't give offensive opportunities. And then the push, maybe a little more of an attack mode against any sort of defensive maneuver. Look at the first half stats. Utah, after a 5-for-5 five five start, really cooled off. Wound up shooting 38% for the half. And Kentucky controlling the play inside. And so this is a 50% field goal shooting team, Utah. And so they've been consistent, but it's the confusion caused by switching defense of Kentucky. Peyton made the first. He's a senior from Alamosa, Colorado. He missed the second. He's the oldest player on the Utah team, 25 years old. He's married. He and his wife, Angie, have a baby daughter. His brother, Trace, will be coming in as a freshman to play basketball next year at Utah. And he's going to be able to talk about playing a great player at Mercer. I mean, he's been all over him, but he's been able to jump over when needed. Here's a nice little double up. And Van Horn took it away from Mercer. One All-American stripped the other, and Van Horn lays it in. Uh, Rick Majerus hangs his hand defensively. Nice little blitz of the pick and roll. And all of a sudden, the Utes are within seven. Padgett nearly traveled. Majerus thought he did. He's stomping the floor. You can feel the building shake. <laughs> what a mild earth Don't say that. night. About 60 miles south of here. It might have been caused by Coach Majerus stomping up and down. I think he just got up to take a shower and sort of shook things up. But 
Uh, the ability to get in the lane once again prevails. Forcing the big guy to make a decision in the backcourt. Wayne Turner with the first bucket of the half for Kentucky. Miller just did get it over in time. He continued to the bucket and got stripped. Epps and Turner were there. Turner with Peyton to the defender. Padgett deflected from behind by Van Horn. Great hustle by Van Horn is the team leader in block shots. Now with 37 for the season. That was Miller's third turnover. He's been basically sound. Kentucky by nine. Just more than two minutes played in the second half. Goliak doubled. And he's trying to fight through it and a foul called. McGlory called for a hit on the arm. They may trap more aggressively than anybody in the country. Uh, that step through. Uh, here's the extraordinary ability to get into the teeth, get right to the tin. The blow by by Wayne Turner and successfully addressing the point dilemma for Rick Pitino late in the year. Foul on McGlore was his first. Second team foul of the half on Kentucky. Mercer's on the bench. Cameron Mills is into the game. Goliak. Rebound Van Horn. And his putback wouldn't go. And that's because Epps was on a nice little play. Epps. Trying to shake Hanson. He could not. Turner trying to drive by Miller to foul and a reach in. Miller, Doliak, and Van Horn all trying to shut off the drive. And the foul is on Miller, his first. Uh, Rick's adjustment, but you can see the push early, getting it inside, something a little subtle influence on the offensive end. The big dilemma, I think, for Rick Pitino is which defense should we run? Should we press or play half court? They've both been sound. Turner, the interesting free throw motion. But most of all, Coach Pitino tells him to relax and try to shoot it with soft hands. A chiropractor's nightmare, though, this lurch initially. He missed both. Mercer fell down to the rebound action as Van Horn rebounded. Now Miller hounded by Mills. Miller strong to the bucket and lost it. Out of bounds, last touch by Kentucky. A very strong getting in the middle, and this is one that nobody could get an eye on and pick up as it ends up a little football hike situation. Goliak blocked by McGlore, but Mills got him from the other side. And that's three now on Cameron Mills. That's going to bring Anthony Epps quickly back into the game. Now, Doliak can do some damage in that low box area. Good offensive moves. They can counter with Medela. Influence subtly in the defense interior of Kentucky. Talk to Rick about his basketball ability. Checking him on the sideline there. Said that Al McGuire told him he'd probably rather play the mascot. Willie Wampum at Marquette than put Rick in the ball game. Well described by basketball ability. Doliak. It was great from the free throw line under pressure against Stanford was 12 for 12 and he makes his first two today. He's now made 21 free throws in a row and the Utes are chipping away down by seven. Mm, Goliak with a shot Sean. Uh, you got to help on Mercer uh, but the forearm is number three. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is taught by coaches, though. The only way to you hand hedge and right there. I didn't think it was too bad, but obviously the officials don't agree. Three personals on Doliak. The second team foul on Utah here in the second half. Just more than three minutes played. Kentucky's largest lead was 14 in the first half. And Doliak got to help out on Mercer. Padgett. Missed the long one, got his own rebound, then he ran into Mercer. They both went down. Turner hits the runner. Well, he does a great job in that lane. It's been an entirely different player since moving back into the starting lineup in the SEC tournament. Double figures in five of the last six for Wayne Turner. Doliak strong inside, but his shot was blocked by Padgett. Turner. <laughs> What a give by Mercer, and they have Epps on the wing for the spread for the three. Double figures again now for Turner. He has 10 points in this one. 
Last touch by Caden. And Rick Majerus trying to earn the call. Say Mercer touched it, but the ball didn't go his way. Inside defense reaction and the turn the other way, Sean. This is the numbers game. Hit at the middle, you got the weak side with Epps covered, or the finish by Turner. Say, and I just had an opportunity at halftime to talk to Rick Majerus, and the point he made was the same thing our Bill Rafferty has been talking about, which is the big guys, especially the center, have got to do a better job running at Mercer as he comes off the picks. As a matter of fact, the last thing he said is, I don't care if anybody beats us in the second half, but it better not be Ron Mercer. And Sean, so far, after four minutes, Mercer is scoreless. And has not taken a shot here in the second half. But Kentucky has widened its lead by a point. The margin of hand at halftime. Padgett missed a three well off. Wayne Turner scored all six Kentucky points here in the second half. Nice move by Van Horn under the bucket. Sean, he's terrific at reading the floor, anticipating the fast break. Nice gamble look by Utah. Van Horn has nine. The deficit facing Utah is nine. Turner oh, scored in double figures in 80 straight games. Trying to make it 81 today. Hanson got away with a walk after that deflected pass wound up in his lap. And Metal with a nice hand hedge caused the turnover. Well, the Utes hang around within striking distance. Down by nine. Trying to get Van Horn the ball. And he has it working on Padgett. There comes the double. Miller, the bounce to the bucket. Tough shot. Bodies fly. He collided with Turner. And Andre Miller is six. And he had a nice option, too, as Van Horn drifted to the corner, getting into the middle. Devastating. Think of South Carolina played Kentucky extremely well because of the dribble of penetration of the three guards. We mentioned the other night the ability of Larry Bird to anticipate a fast break in his heyday. Uh, Van Horn, extraordinary at that. But the hand hedge here, Mike Mayock just talked about not letting Mercer beat them. He pops out, the hand hedge causes the turnover, and referee Sean McDonough come up with the walk. <laughs> but the penetration into the lane, the little kiss rewarded by Andre. He's got some toughness. The Van Horn family on the left of your screen standing and applauding Keith Van Horn's wife Amy who's expecting their second child in mid-June. They have a two-year-old daughter Sabrina on the right of your picture was Keith's mother May whose dad passed away a couple of years ago. Padgett and it struck the shot clock on the top of the backboard so Utah gets it back. Narrowing the gap on Patino's Wildcats. Utah down seven. And Rick wants a little energy now going full court. They're not playing the man, passing it in. Fronting everybody else. You've got to screen and make good cuts. Medela has it back from Caton. Caton looking for help. They need to hurry to get it over. Medela just did get it over with a second to spare. with the matchup now with Van Horn. You should take him away from the goal. Medela trying to get it into Van Horn. And McGlure was holding him. Nice. And that's the second foul on Jamal McGlure, the freshman from Toronto. And Medela is a nice passer, Sean. Here's the physical play down on the box. And the ability to spin and cover. I think he'd do some damage getting out of that area. But Medela, who's had a little cultural shock on, of his own, going from reindeer meat to pizza with Rick, with a nice little entry pass. Miller, tough shot, fading away, and he made it. And with 14 minutes left, Utah has narrowed the gap to five. Andre Miller is eight points. That's his game. He's tough in the low post. And guards aren't used to defending in that area. Mercer whipped it underneath the Turner. They've done a good job defensively on Mills today, have the Utes. Well, they know he's got to put it on the floor to beat him. Miller got a hand on the ball just when it looked like Turner was about to go by him. Muhammad on Metalize. Tough shot. Wouldn't go rebound Hanson. Utes on a 6-0 run looking to build on it. Now has Mills. They should go right to the box quickly. See if he can make a quick move. Medela, tough shot. Not the shot they wanted, although Medela can make that. They had time to look for a better one, particularly with the mismatch Bill mentioned. Great feed. 
Muhammad fouled all the way up by Drew Hansen. Well, Muhammad usually takes care of his disciples. This time, Turner takes care of Muhammad. We've seen him go left quite a bit. Draw, suck the D, and the nice looking dish, the foul from the rear. But Turner, as you noted, a different team within that point mentality for Rick Pitino out there. Van Horn takes the seat. Jackson's back in the ball game. Three fouls now on Hanson. He's gone out, replaced by Jeff Johnson. Three freshmen in the game again for Utah. Muhammad doesn't get the roll, but everything but go in. They both had a chance to talk to Rick Majerus. He said the difficulty in playing Kentucky is to simulate their speed and coverage. In practice? Yeah, it's, it's just a different look. I mean, these big guys are very mobile, something yours generally aren't. Six-point game as Muhammad made one out of two. Not many scoring options on the court now for Utah with Van Horn on the bench. Goliak, the leading scorer, who's still in the game. The metal is very tough on the box if they use him. There you go. He's got good. Then he come big. Excellent ball movement. Miller in open three. Missed it out of the corner. Mills the rebound. And the save for Muhammad. Mills guarded by Jackson and an offensive foul called on Pickett as he was jockeying for position with Goliak or rather Mellon and it's the third foul on Pickett. Well, they don't let you swim they don't let you duck in and clear the guy out you can see just the lift of the shoulder and metal with a little toughness held his ground. And an up and down ride at Kentucky for Pickett as a freshman in 93 he was a key part of their final four team but in recent years he's become more and more of a bit player last year it sat out the whole year had a spat with Rick Pitino at the start of the NCAA tournament didn't travel the first couple of sites he made up with Rick Pitino prior to the Meadowlands and was there when the team won it not the right guy to pick a fight with I would no. think huh? Jared said Rick is always right the lesson he learned Turner intercepts the pass Rick uh, Majera said that we don't play any zone. He, had, he was tempted to think about it against this conducting team, but they play great man to man. And Rick Pitino has gotten an extended rest for Mercer, one that he needed. He's played a lot of minutes in this tournament. He's getting ready to check back in. Good reaction defensively by Goliak. Shot clock at five. Muhammad trying to set a screen. Turner must shoot with Miller right in his face. Picked up, but no good by Muhammad. Muhammad again along the baseline, didn't get the bounce. Bodies flying, and the officials letting them play out at eight. I like that little toughness and activity. So Utah's hanging around, down by six. Approaching 11 minutes remaining. The Ute fans, many of them on their feet. Tough pass, Doliak. And it deflected out of bounds by Muhammad and Mills and a timeout Ron Mercer will check back in after the timeout still has not attempted a shot here in the second half 11 minutes remaining Kentucky by six of the NCAA basketball championship is sponsored by Phillips Magnavox Web TV Wendy's crispy chicken nuggets E-Trade, and by Cellular One. Relive March Madness. Experience all of this year's action with the official 1997 NCAA Championship video. Call now, 1-800-747-7999. From the excitement of the opening rounds to the drama of the Final Four, that's 1-800-747-7999. Congratulations to the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They're on the road to their first Final Four and the first team from their conference in the Final Four since Michigan in 1993. And the Providence College Friars continue their run. The number 10 seed in the Elite Eight. First time a seed of that ilk has been in the Elite Eight since 1987 when LSU was there as a number 10 seed as well. 
and Mercer back in with the 20 minutes in the first half. And what did you say, 39 to be shown? Huge shot by Miller, a step back three. He has 11, and all of a sudden the Utes are within three points. Well, Mercer's out there, you got to use him. Nice look to Padgett. A collapse. And Padgett to finish, the sophomore from Louisville with six points. And they just did get it into Caton. Numbers in their favor. Dolia. He hits the baseline jumper. Van Horn is back in the game as well. Kentucky had gone more than five and a half minutes without a field goal before the bucket by Padgett. They had missed six straight from the floor. Mercer had it deflected by Caton. Free ball controlled by Miller. Three a pointer would tie it for Utah now. We're midway through the second half. Well, they have selected properly. Huh? Challenging the pressure on occasion and running their half court stuff. And a kick ball. So they'll reset the shot clock to 35. It was at 19. Utah at 55% here in the second half, while Kentucky is at 31% since the break. Fatigue, too, I think. All of a sudden, the defense may not be as tough in the half court. Only nine players dressed. Only eight of them on scholarship. Hanson ties the game with a three. And too simple. That was just a screen away, pop to the top. Very soft defensively right now. Patino wants to straighten it out. It is a full timeout for Kentucky. The three-pointer by Hanson, who doesn't score much, gets Utah even. Andre Miller's mother, Andrea Robinson, hailed by Rick Majerus as a key part of her son's development. She really emphasizes academics. And Andre's done well in the classroom after being a non-qualifier as a freshman. Tie game. Utah trailed by 14 in the first half. And having an early seven-point lead. And they got Mercer moving just a little bit. Gets a good look here. Well, huh, tough to control all game long for the second half. Ron Mercer with his first shot of the second half. In nearly 11 minutes in. And Kentucky leads again by two. They've done a nice job locking guys low on the block and then settling for a jumper if they don't get it inside. All-Americans matched up with Mercer guarding Van Horn. Now it's Muhammad leading on Van Horn as he went to the other side. Five on the shot clock. That three blocked by Muhammad. Turner. Cricket Epps. On the court with Muhammad and Mercer for the Wildcats. Mercer for a three. Rebound X. And Van Horn felt he should have squeezed that one. Mercer in traffic. Doesn't matter with Doliac at nearly seven feet. Jumping out at him. Mercer scores nonetheless. He scored four straight points to give Kentucky a four-point lead. And Ben Caton really hustled. Didn't matter. Three on two. Caton off for Doliak. And he missed a short one. Got his own rebound and was fouled by Muhammad. Or perhaps Turner. It's on Turner from behind. And the fouls wanes first. How about the little screen down here, Sean? And now he knows with the little peek that he can knock it down. And Caton sprinting. He may need a respirator when this is over. Doliak in the front, Caton on the out. And the ability to convert. Three for three from the line today for Doliak. Now 22 in a row. He's made 37 of his last 38. He had six points in overtime. Three key players fouled out against Stanford on Thursday night. Doliak with a stabilizing force. Kentucky by two, under eight minutes remaining. The lob for... Oh, yes. 
And he just did get his fingertips on it to tip in Turner's pass. What a smart play, too. The press ensues. Goliak is pass deflected by Turner. And Peyton open, but a little casual with the pass. And you can't do that against Kentucky. Yeah, a little spurt time right now. Got to be careful if you're Utah. Rick it out for X. He wants a 20 to Pajaris, and there's no way they'll miss him because he's out at the three-point line calling for the 22nd timeout. The ability to pull a string, and Andrea a little heartsick as Kentucky's able to step it up just a little bit. Turner, eyes, everybody looking to help on Mercer. They hedge down and prick it with a great read, and you just don't get out quick enough. And Epps keeps sticking that dagger in. And right away, the bench a little bit excited because the press and the impact continues for Kentucky. Seven unanswered points for Kentucky. Mercer started the run with four in a row, then the big three by Epps, who was a youth killer in Minneapolis last year. Hanson the push. Van Horn. Might have been tipped by Pringett, but it found its way into the bucket nonetheless. And Van Horn is finally in double figures now with 11 points. That's 81 straight game with double digits in scoring. You almost get the feeling Rick may have implored him to get involved. Same play, nice luck by Turner. Same result. Pringett to the 10. Six and a half minutes remaining. Epps to get the lead back to 10. Rebound tipped away from Mercer. And a great save by Miller. Now Epps down the lane. And a foul before the shot. Uh, everybody giving it all they can to win this one. Uh, the long rebound, something Kentucky's terrific at coming down with. Andre Miller, who's been sound all game, unfortunately threw it back into the Kentucky hands. Those lobs to Prickett, Sean, should be assists for Mercer as Andre's mom, chagrined, looking on, and she emotes during the course of a game, looking at the tapes, different situations. <laughs> she dies. Uh, she qualifies for a coach's wife in that situation. Mm. Four fouls now on Hanson. He fouled out of the game against Stanford. As did Caton and Van Horn without their three veteran stalwarts. The Utes prevailed over the Cardinal in overtime. Padgett. Nice help by Dolak. Now he's at a disadvantage. They should go to Mercer. It's Van Horn guarding Mercer. Padgett trying to set a screen. And there it passed. Came back to Prickett. Great job by Caton. He's on the all white defensive team. Prickett's down moving on the baseline. The shot was short. Tipped out of bounds. Utah ball. A good defense because Mercer's got great strength. Able to take a hit. Turn the corner. Goliak struggling to get it in. Hanson over to our front court. The shuffle cut screen down. How do you use the dribble a more on these bigger guys? Shots. I think he can take over just a little bit. Van Horn into Doliak. Out to Caton. Van Horn. Got Turner in the air. Turner poked it away to foul call. Jarris wants it to be a shooting foul, and Art McDonald says no. It is, however, the seventh team foul, so it'll be a one-on-one -one opportunity for Van Horn, the best free throw shooter in the WAC this year. Great ball movement, though, the inside-out look, and somehow I think Keith should have got one up quicker. Maybe a good snap chest pass initially. He was open. Mills heads out of the ball game. First trip to the line today for Van Horn. He's made 28 straight free throws. Hey, hey. 
And they get 29. He's now over 90% for the season. 90.2 to lead the whack. And they're not a team that extends the floor either, Sean. They got to stay close to win this one. They're not a full court pressure philosophy like Rick Pitino's guys. Well, while he was waiting outside the delivery room for Amy to give birth to their two year old daughter Sabrina two years ago Van Horn wrote a paper called personal resilience. Marriage will do that to you. Got an A on the paper. <laughs> yeah, just for perseverance huh? Dedicated great story four years and the maturation process. We need more personal resilience today. Padgett missed the three. Kate in the rebound. Here come the Utes again down by five. Miller looks very tired as you might expect. Dealing with the pressure from Kentucky most of the afternoon. He played 39 minutes in the overtime game against Stanford. That's right. He's dribbling with his left hand because his right hand is bothering him. The knuckles are sore. You can see him over his head. He continually bounced the ball with the left. A major concern coming in. He must have gotten a whack on the other end. You mentioned it wasn't the wrist that bothered him after the collision and the basket support Thursday night as much as it is the inflamed knuckles. And that's been a chronic problem he's had throughout the year. He keeps landing on that hand. And now thrust into the spotlight is Jordy McTavish. And he'll have to be careful with Turner, who takes it away. Good call, Sean. Oh, the pressure immediately. Rick Majerus wants the timeout. That's the dilemma. Other than Miller, there's not a point mentality. Timeout, Utah. And it will be a full timeout. The freshman McTavish lost it to Turner, who finished the job. Pass by seven. Four twenty-six remaining. Kentucky leads by seven. Utah back in the game on the strength of 50% shooting here in the second half. And Kentucky with a seven-point lead, despite a lack of effectiveness from three-point land. Ron Mercer with four points in the second half, and a moment ago, Andre Miller went to the Utah dressing room. That's not a good development for the Utes. And that was a huge sequence of events a moment ago after Miller went out with the right hand obviously bothering him. Jordy McTavish had his pocket pick. Instead of a chance to get it down to about three, it went back to seven. And a five-second call on the inbounding play. Doliak couldn't get it in. Uh, Rick Majerus said it was highly laudable what Rick Pitino did with Derek Anderson. Not playing him because he was concerned about his future. He said, if if it's a problem with Miller, I won't play him either. Going into the locker room is a very serious situation for Utah. They just can't react the same out there. Tavish is no longer in the game. We have the Jackson and Caden and Hanson to do the ball, go for the ball handling. And Utah's done a nice job shading towards Mercer's side. Hadgett a huge three. Ten-point lead now for Kentucky. Padgett has nine points. He returned to action in December after missing a year and a half due to academics. So they remind you of a great prize fighter. They know when to get after you, when you're hurting, when you're on the ropes. They just step it up. Jackson missed a three, rebounded by Prickett. It was Jackson who came into the game when Miller left. After McTavish was yanked, Kentucky on a 10-2 run. The rebound as he went over top of Van Horn to get it. And he powered the goal and was fouled on the way up. And it's on Hanson. He's fouled out. He may have been hit earlier too, Sean, as Hanson continued the onslaught, trying to get a piece of the ball. But the rebounding, the ability of Prickett, Padgett, Nazi Mohammed, the floor when he's in there, the body guys under a little bit, become bigger. Hanson fouls out. The junior leaves with six points and three rebounds. He fouled out against Stanford as well on Thursday night. Well, the ability to offensive rebound, the understanding is so important as you get inside position when possible. You see Prickett right under the rim, but Padgett able to body guys, get them a little bit closer, and you can see from the rear a little whack by Hanson. Padgett makes the first. Here's Mike Mayock. Yeah. 
apparently we're having difficulty with Mike's Mike. See if they go right for it here, Sean. They can press Freddie. I mean, they know it's that time of the game where they can tie it up. There's a different pressure point now. The lead back to 12. Utah had pulled even at 43-43. Since then, they've been outscored 18 to 6. Whistle underneath. Too much jockeying on the part of Kentucky and Van Horn. We'll try Mike again. Sean, what happened with Andre Miller? He obviously re-injured that right hand. He had trouble opening and closing it on the bench, and both team doctor, Dr. Petron, and trainer Gerald Fisher applied pressure to the back of the hand. It was very painful. The decision was made to take him into the locker room, numb the hand, and see if he can continue to play later this half. Time is running out. 3.08 remaining. Van Horn makes the free throw. And, Johnny, if you recall, Rick mentioned Sidney Moncrief as a guy that he coached in the NBA that played with that the knee and the bone rubbing against one another. The quality of life was his concern with Sidney. And he said the same thing that is with Andre. He won't play him. Here comes Miller back to the court. Remains to be seen if he'll re-enter the game. Three minutes remaining. Kentucky in search of its 12th appearance in the Final Four. And a chance to defend its national championship. Would be under three minutes away now from the trip to Indianapolis. Mercer, that's a two. The activity set it up. They use the big guys just below the foul line in an extraordinary fashion. Van Horn, it wouldn't go. And the rebound by Padgett, and Utah's really in trouble now. Down by 12 with two and a half minutes left. Epps lost the handle, poked away. By Johnson to Jackson. Jackson to bounce to the bucket. Too much bouncing. He traveled. Too much hop, step, and jumping for Jackson. Thought he could jump, stop, inopportune turnover. Freshman from Portland called for a travel. He's another like Nazim Muhammad, who's had a serious change in body type. When David Jackson was in the ninth grade, he was a 250 pound center. He's 214, he plays on the wing in college. Fouls on Jeff Johnson is first. The Utes are not yet over the limit. That's 16 fouls. And Sean Rick Majerus came out here thinking, let's take Mercer out. They did. They were early in the, in the second half were solid, but other people stepped up, particularly Turner penetrating. Here's the giveaway by Van Horn. And the right man, the foul, Turner, who struggles from a line. And Horn commits his first foul. Welcome home to America's Night of Television on CBS tonight. Don't miss Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, Early Edition, and Walker, Texas Rangers. All tonight here on CBS. Turner 0 for 2 from the line today. This is a 1 and 1. Rattles out to Jackson. Kentucky by 12, 210 remaining. Johnson running the floor. Jackson Hill to the hands, but it was too hot to handle. Quick hitters, what you're looking for, but you can't afford that kind of a mistake at the end. Now they go full court. This could open things up for Kentucky. They get Mills in. And they get Turner out. They want to take the worst free throw shooter out of the ball game. Turner with five steals in this game. A career high and none bigger than the Ball he took away from McTavish when Utah had the ball down by five. That steal and lay in forced a timeout by Utah and seemed to burst their bubble a little bit. How about Miller? I mean, just a critical juncture for Rick Majerus, his mainstay at the point position, and he's still holding on to those fingers on the sideline. He's a junior. He'll be back for another year. And they're hoping with the new legislation. Being passed by the NCAA, he could be back for two more years. Props may be given the year back. A nice little bounce back, Sean, huh? the, particularly the turnover category. And it is that easy. The level of intensity of Kentucky's press, I don't think anybody else has it in the country. The numbers, the rotation, then half court, and they step up and in concert take away dribble penetration. And all without Anderson there on the sideline, huh? I think the common denominator of the three teams that beat Kentucky during the regular season, they all have good, deep guard play. South Carolina beat them twice. 
Ole Miss and Clemson have good guards as well and can handle that pressure. Not enough depth to guard at times today for Utah. Miller did admirably. Ben Caden with the bucket and the quick foul. Rick Majerus is going to lengthen this game as much as he can. Force Kentucky to make a bunch of free throws in the final two minutes. Rick Patino told us yesterday that it's possible, should his team advance to the Final Four, that Allen Edwards could play, despite the fact he has a stress fracture of his right ankle. Patino said yesterday he was told by the doctors people run marathons on that type of an injury, mm -hmm. and Edwards might be back. They could use the added depth. They took the cast off, so he's walking around in street clothing, and they expect it uh, next weekend if they were to win today, which uh, they are in control right now. A nice addition back. Maybe the best conditioned team in the country. Right? So mm -hmm. A lot of guys might get upset at that. They can go full tilt both ends of the floor. That's key performance again this year against Utah. 12 points, 6 of 6 from the line. For Anthony Epps playing in career game number 139 at Kentucky. Only Jared Prickett of 141 has appeared in more. Uh, we both have a lot of time with Rick Majerus as they try and get the quick hitter on this end. Jackson makes a three. Majerus wants a timeout. His team didn't see it. It's an 11 point game, 140 left. And a foul on Jackson as he hit Epps. Two fouls on Jackson. And Utah now in the double bonus. That's 10 team fouls against the youth. So Kentucky will shoot two the rest of the way. Yeah, Rick Majerus with his guys last year, as you know, he felt there were some things he left Epsilon and blamed himself for that. This year, the game plan, I thought, was terrific. Mercer had a great second half. They come back, or first half, comes back in the second half, take him out of the game. There's so many weapons for Kentucky that it's very, you can't keep putting the finger in the dike. That's still perfect from the free throw line. People keep talking, and these two coaches did yesterday, about how this Kentucky team is not as good as last year's. But you wonder how far off they can be. They're on the verge of their 34th victory against four defeats. It's a much different team. Eight players who were part of that championship last year are not in uniform for Kentucky today. Edwards, Edwards and Anderson. Doliak, a three. And now they get the quick timeout. 13 points for Doliak. Still a minute and a half to go. The Utes back within 10. In the middle of your screen, Joanne Patino. Her brother, Billy Minardi, on the left of your picture. And Ashley Judd, a Kentucky fan, on the right of your screen. Obviously excited about the developments. The Kentucky Wildcats with a 10-point lead, a minute and 29 seconds remaining. Sometimes it's tough to concentrate on the game, huh? Indeed it is. Cricket trying to inbound. Quick steal, quick hitter. Jackson down the lane after the steal by Johnson. Johnson has it back off the miss. They need quick shots, but they need to score. They have to make sure they get a good one. An excellent defense by Kentucky, forcing the clock down and Caden Travel. They do a wonderful job pressuring the three-point shooter. Uh, Rick's always espoused the theory, seven or eight points below, you keep that team on three-point shooting percentage. They're 37%, their opponent 31 during the course of the year. 20-second timeout called by the Wildcats. With a minute 10 remaining, Kentucky has the ball. Leading by 10. Tomorrow, CBS Sports Olympic Winterfest goes to Norway for the World Nordic Combined Ski Championships. Beginning at 12.30 Eastern, then at 1.30, the top players and coaches of the college basketball season will be honored at the Boost Naismith Awards, followed by the Road to the Final Four at 2, featuring previews of tomorrow's regional finals. And those games are Louisville and North Carolina in the east at 2.40, and Providence and Arizona in the southeast from Birmingham at 5 Eastern time. All of that tomorrow here on CBS. And then the final four field will be complete. They're trying to run and jump at them. And then the giveaway, they didn't get it. And Pickett gets the easy dunk. Great ball movement by Kentucky. Padgett gets the assist. And eight points for Prickett. He'll play at least one more game 
for the Wildcats. He rips down the rebound. 50 seconds remaining. Ten rebounds for Frickett today. They're trying to keep away here. Doing a nice job as the scramble occurs. Got a match up if you're going to give it. Don't go running around. There goes Van Horn. Powell and Van Horn is his second. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Andre Miller. A courageous effort and a good job handling the Kentucky pressure with the very sore hand that caused him to leave the game in the last five minutes. Ron Mercer, particularly strong in the first half when he had 15 of his 21 points. They are the Chevrolet MVP. The executive producer of CBS Sports is Rick Gentile. Keith Van Horn leaves. There was standing ovation not only from the Utah fans. X with his first miss from the line. The coordinating producer of NCAA basketball is Bob Dinkus. Today's game produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Larry Cavalina. The coordinating producer of the Road to the Final Four is Eric Mann. The Road to the Final Four was directed by Bob Matina. The associate director of today's game is Ken Mack. The broadcast associate is James Sample. Our thanks to all those people to make it so much fun this week out here. How emotional is that? Kate and Van Horn going out, Sean. Marvelous career. Careers, I should say. Like championships. Van Horn, three-time conference player of the year, elected to come back for his senior season. It'll come up just short of the final four, but they did move past the previous hurdle, which had been the Sweet 16. Now the Cats are back, huh? Maybe not as good as last year, but you have to like their chances of defending their title as much as any other team that will be heading to the Final Four. An impressive victory over Utah. The youth season ends at 29 and 4. With it, a 14 game winning streak ends while Kentucky goes to 34 and 4. Seven straight wins for Kentucky this season, 10 straight in the NCAA tournament dating back to last year's run, and they will head to their 12th Final Four, their third in the 90s, and they'll meet Minnesota next Saturday in Indianapolis. The rest of the field will be decided tomorrow. Once again, the final score, Kentucky 72, Utah 59. We'll join Pat O'Brien in New York after this. A couple programming notes tonight on CBS. Don't miss Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, followed by Early Edition and Walker, Texas Ranger. Let's go to Raftery, CBS employee, Bill. All right, Pat O'Brien, thank you very much. Two happy Wildcats and Ron. Great first half. Were you fatigued after the 20 minutes? Not really, you know, I was just anxious to keep playing, um, keep going, keep getting loose. And uh, my teammates, I mean, they went out and they played great. So uh, I don't think anybody really felt tired. We know that uh, we had to go out and win this game. We got some highlights for you to take a look at. Uh, were you more relaxed after you made the decision to announce to leave Kentucky? I think so because, uh, you know, it, it made me put a lot of focus on this team and, and winning another national championship. So it really helped me out a lot. Now, did Patino teach you how to get free like this? Yeah, lately he has been teaching me. I haven't been using the correct, um, you know, uh, correct way to get open. He's been teaching me lately and uh, it's helped out a lot. So it shows, you know, if you, if you use the screens properly, it, you can go out and hit shots. Well, I, I know you guys listened to the coach, Rick. Uh, before the game, I had a chance to chat with you. You said you were nervous. First time I've ever heard you say that. Well, I may not have admitted it, but I've been nervous for 17 years of head coaching. But, you know, Ron came out in the second half, he had be, and they did what they do to great players. They get out after you, and I told Ron, I said, baby, we can't win this one without you. They're, you got to keep on moving, keep on, and then he just took over. He took over, and that was more impressive to me, the one flurry that he had than the 15 points in the first half. He did it after, and I gave him 28-second breather in the first half, so that was enough for him. He had 28 seconds off. <laughs> and defensively, I mean, you, the dilemma was, what do I play, half court or full? You do them both so well. You, you know, this is a wonderful team. It's the most fun I've ever had as a coach. Uh, my biggest disappointment is, I only have him for two years because he's a, I always say this, he's a 20-star person on a five-star scale. Well, Kentucky's happy they've had you for more than two years. Yeah, Congratulations you. to you, Rick. Thank Good you, luck Rick. next week in Indianapolis. Uh, we're going to have Pat O'Brien back after these commercial words. Go, 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 go. 
two more teams to pick for the Final Four, and tomorrow on CBS, we have Olympic Winterfest, the Boost Naismith Award Show, Road to the Final Four Show, in which Mike Krzyzewski is forced to talk about North Carolina, <laughs> and then Louisville and North Carolina at 2.40 Eastern Time, and at 5 o'clock, it's Providence and Arizona. And as you look at Kentucky and that fabled history there, they've had 12 Final Fours in their storied history. And Minnesota making their first ever Final Four appearance, Clark. Well, I look for a very interesting matchup, Pat. Minnesota is the kind of team that will take advantage of opportunities against the press. Their backcourt is experienced and versatile. And a great job by Rick Pitino getting this team back in here, Mike. Absolutely. That's, that's one of the toughest things a coach would ever have to do. He's riding a great player, but he has unbelievable balance with the other guys. And Clark and Mike, I think that Minnesota has the, the guard depth the court savvy and the ball handling skills to take a lot of sting out of Kentucky's press. I think it's going to be a fight of wheels between these two teams. A good matchup. All right, tomorrow, our first game, Louisville and North Carolina. Two Hall of Famer coaches going at each other. Well, I, I think Dean has the edge, and I give him the edge because he has better talent than Louisville has. With Dewan Weedow, that's a tough coaching situation for Denny Crum. Denny Crum is 6-0 all time in regional final games, Mike. The toughest game to win when you're undefeated in that game, but he's going to have to keep Jamison off the boards, and I don't know if he can do that. Then our second game, Providence and Arizona, Clark. Very interesting matchup here. The key, I think, is going to be how Arizona's perimeter guys handle Sham God and Corey Wright, keeping those guys out of the middle. Front court matchup should be about even. Should be a classic battle between two evenly matched teams. And another chance for America to see Michael Bibby. Well, I think he's the country's premier freshman basketball player. He stepped up at an opportune time against Kansas and showed that he has unique skills for a freshman. He showed one thing too, Pat. Once the game starts, you don't need an ID card. Look at those pictures. That's what it's all about. Kids loving college basketball. We hope you do as well. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Good night, everybody.